chapter wise list of all my videos is available at this point for dvd pen drive please write an email to me these videos they do not require internet they play offline there is no problem of buffering and please subscribe to my channel for regular updates thank you thank you for your support once again In this tutorial we shall discuss the various formulas for the area of a triangle. All the formulas that I discuss in this tutorial are important from the exam point of view. Questions in the previous exams have all been asked from these formulas. They are all equally important. Another thing is that these formulas they will apply to any type of triangle and there are some formulas which apply specifically to equilateral triangle to isosceles triangle those formulas we shall discuss in a separate chapter so we are discussing the most general triangle the most general triangle let us start with arabert's formula Aryabhat's formula is the simplest formula for the area of a triangle. This formula needs no introduction. We all know and have used this formula in all our basic classes, 6th, 7th classes. Let me now explain what this formula is. Suppose the base of this triangle is of length B. And also suppose that the height of this triangle is h, which means that the distance between the vertex and the base is known to be h. Then the area of this triangle can be expressed according to area is equal to half of base into height. A simple product of the base into height divided by 2 will give us the area of this triangle. As I have always laid stress on the fundamentals, without an understanding of the fundamentals, nobody can clear these exams. And therefore, with each and every discussion, I always try to attach the proof of the formulas, the proof of the facts, which I have done throughout my tutorials and in this tutorial also I will derive this formula so that you can understand from where Aryabhata he got this formula. Let us suppose we have to find out the area of this triangle ABC. We can derive the formula of Aryabhata that is area is equal to base into height by 2 by simple construction on this triangle. From the point C, draw a line parallel to AB. Let us call this line as CD. Similarly, through this point A, draw a line parallel to the side BC and let this line be called AD. So we can write the proof of this formula is being given. So we can write draw draw CD as parallel to AB and AD as parallel to BC. We start with this construction. This construction leads us to A, B, C, D as a parallelogram, which implies, which implies A, B, C, D is a parallelogram. Why? Because the opposite sides AB is parallel to CD and AD is parallel to BC. If both the pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel to each other, 
then that quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, with the result of this construction, we obtain ABCD as a parallelogram. Now, the area of a parallelogram is already known to us. That is, if the side BC has a length B and if I produce this and if I draw a perpendicular here and its height is H, then it is known that the area of the parallelogram ABCD, we say, we know. In fact, I will prove this also when I take up parallelograms. We know that area of that area A, B, C, D is equal to this base into this height is equal to B H. Now, if we see this A D is parallel to B C, which implies this angle is equal to this angle. They are the alternate angles for the transversal AC. And similarly, if AB is parallel to CD, then this angle is equal to this angle for the transversal AC. Now, this triangle I am seeing ABC and I am seeing the triangle ADC. In these two triangles, this angle is equal to this, this angle is equal to this and this side is common. So, the triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. So, we can mark that this triangle and this triangle, they are congruent. They are congruent by the angle side and angle property. Angle common side and angle. Now, since this triangle is congruent to this triangle, we can write which implies which implies area of area of triangle ABC is equal to half of the area ABCD because of congruency of this triangle and the upper triangle that has resulted because of the parallelogram that we created. So, which implies that the area of triangle should be half of the area ABCD. The area ABCD is already written as BH. So, it is equal to BH which proves our theorem that the area of a triangle is equal to half of the base of that triangle into the height of that triangle. Let us move to our next formula now. Many times it is not possible for us to know the height of a triangle. There are many situations in which we cannot know the height of the triangle. So, in those situations, if instead of the height and angle of the triangle is known, then we can obtain the area with the help of trigonometry. That formula we also now discuss. This formula says that if, let me first of all tell you about the convention that if the triangle is labeled as ABC, then the side opposite to the angle A, that is this side BC, is labeled as small a, this is by convention. And the side opposite to angle B, that is the side AC, 
is labeled as small b and the side opposite to angle c which is ab in this case is labeled as c units so the length bc is a the length ac is b and the length ab is c let us suppose a and c are known and it is also known that this angle has a measure of theta so if we know if we say known to us is angle theta the measure a and c that is b is not the requirement i have simply written is because i was explaining the convention if you know these three things side angle and side then the area is given by the formula half of a into c into the sine of the angle theta this is known as the trigonometric formula for the area of a triangle as usual i will now prove this formula so that our understanding over the concepts it becomes even perfect the hint to the proof of this formula comes from the fact that this formula looks something like aryabhat's formula so let me show you how we can prove this formula so i will write proof of this formula for proving this from the vertex a draw a line perpendicular to the side bc and let us label the height of this line as h now we know that area of this triangle abc will be given by the formula half of the base into the height of the triangle abc this is the famous aryabhat's formula that i have discussed just now now if we look at this right angled triangle if i mark this point as x then from trigonometry by trigonometry by trigonometry we know that this h is equal to h is equal to the hypotenuse c times sin theta is equal to c into sin theta this is the most fundamental trigonometric ratio so which implies area should be equal to half of a multiplied by now instead of h you will write c sin theta this is the proof of this formula through trigonometry so this is how we can prove this formula that the area of a triangle by trigonometry is half of the two sides into the sine of the included angle let us move to our next formula now hero's formula is useful if the sides are known if you know the measure of all the sides of the triangle then hero's formula is useful in that case trigonometry is useful when you know one angle but if you do not know the angle and you also do not know the height of a triangle then hero's formula this formula can be used to determine the area of that triangle so let us say the triangle is abc and as usual the length of this side be a the length of this side be b 
and the length of this side be C. So if you know A, B and C, then Hero's formula is much useful. In olden days, when mensuration was developed because of the measurements of land, this formula was very useful because usually it is very easy to measure the sides of a, of a triangular plot. It is a bit difficult to draw a perpendicular and evaluate, find out the value of this perpendicular. It is usually very easy to quickly measure the sides of a triangle. So, Hero's formula is very useful if you know the lengths of the sides of a triangle. Hero's formula has two versions. I will write both of them. The first version says that the area of a triangle solely in terms of A, B and C can be expressed according to the formula area is equal to one fourth of the square root of A plus B plus C multiplied by A plus B minus C multiplied by A minus B plus C multiplied by minus A plus B plus C. That is, you have to take the product of four quantities. In one, all A, B and C are added. In the second, C is subtracted, B is subtracted and then A is subtracted. If you multiply these four numbers, take the square root, divide by four, the area of this formula can be determined. This I can say is the form 1 of this formula. This is not very common form. A more common form is the form 2. In form 2, the same formula can be written in a simplified way if we say that S is equal to A plus B plus C by 2. If we find a number A plus B plus C by 2 and label it S, then the above formula can be written in a more compact form. S is also called semi perimeter because perimeter is A plus B plus C the sum of all the sides of the triangle and if you divide it by 2 we get semi perimeter. If we make use of semi perimeter then the above formula can be written simply as area is equal to square root of S into S minus A into S minus B into S minus C. This formula is in a much simpler form as compared to the upper formula although they are one and the same. Let us now move to our next formula. Hero's formula is also available when instead of the three sides of a triangle, the lengths of the three medians are known to us. Let us suppose this is our triangle ABC and let AD be a median of this triangle which starts from A and joins the midpoint of the side BC and such a line is always called the median. Similarly, if through B we draw a line towards the side AC 
so that it cuts the side AC at the midpoint E. Then BE is called the median of this triangle ABC, the median BE. Similarly, the median CF will cut the side AB in its midpoint F. A triangle can have three medians and if instead of the lengths of the sides of the triangle, we know the lengths of the medians, then we have a formula for the area of a triangle. Let us suppose the length of this median is M A and the length of this median is M C and the length of the third median is M B. So I am writing we are given known is the length of the median A, the length of the median B and the length of the median C. The median starting from the vertex A towards the side BC has a length MA. M stands for median and A stands for the numbering or the name of the median that this is the median A and its length we can denote as MA. Sometimes many teachers they do not use MA, MB and MC they simply use A, B and C. But I strongly do not approve of that because that will lead to a confusion with the sides of a triangle. So it is better to keep the names as separate right from the start. Because if in an examination the examiner says that both the medians and sides are involved in a certain way then it will lead you to a lot of confusion. The utility of this formula is mostly academic because in a practical situation it is much easier to know the lengths of the sides of a triangle instead of the medians. But the surprising thing is that this formula is always there in your exams. Questions based on this formula, I have seen there are number of questions in the previous years that require you to have an understanding of this formula. So now coming straightway to the formula, the formula says that if we write S is equal to MA plus MB plus MC by 2 on the same pattern as we had a plus b plus c by 2 if we define a number s is equal to ma plus mb plus mc by 2 the semi sum of the medians s then the formula for the area can be written as area is equal to square root of S into S minus M A into S minus M B into S minus M C. If you compare this formula with the Heron's formula for the sides of a triangle, then the only difference is that instead of these measures of the sides A, B and C, we are using the lengths of the medians of that triangle. You can remember this formula, but this is easier to remember if you remember, if you contrast it with the Heron's formula for the sides of a triangle. There are more than 300 formulas for the area of a triangle. People have developed various formulas. 
and this particular one that I am discussing is in terms of the in radius and semi perimeter of the triangle. Now let us suppose we have a triangle ABC and let the length of the side BC be A and the length of the side AC be B and of this side be C. The circle that is completely contained inside a triangle like this circle, this circle is called the in circle of triangle ABC and the center of this circle this is called the in center and the these these are called the in radius this one this one and this one we can denote the in radius by r so if you know if you know a b c and r if these four numbers are known to you then instead of using hero's formula which is a bit complicated it involves square root so if you know r also that is the in radius then there is a simpler formula for the area of this triangle we can write that the area of this triangle is equal to the in radius multiplied by s which is the semi perimeter where s is equal to the usual a plus b plus c by 2 the semi perimeter of this triangle. This formula is also very important from your exam point of view. A number of questions have been asked on the basis of this formula. There can be a proof of this formula also because it is very easy to prove that the area of a triangle in terms of the in radius and semi perimeter is R into S. Let us prove it. Label the in center as O. This is O. Then if we join O to B, O to C and O to A, then we get how many triangles? O, B, C is one triangle. O, A, C is second triangle. And O, A, B is the third triangle. Now we can add the, write the formula for the areas of these triangles. So I will write area of triangle OBC is equal to half of the base into height which is R. Just have a look at the triangle OBC. If R is the in radius then the radius will be perpendicular to the tangent BC because the circle is touching the side BC. So the area OBC is going to be half of the base multiplied by the height R. And similarly we can write area of triangle OAC is equal to half of 
Now this is O A C. The base is B and the height is R. So we can write it half of B into R. And similarly, the area of triangle O A B can be written equal to half of the base of that triangle into the height of that triangle. So we have formulas for this triangle, for this triangle and for this triangle. So adding adding we get a is equal to so if we add all the left hand side we will get the entire area a equal to and if we add these half of r will be common so we can write it is half of r into a plus b plus c which is equal to r multiplied by the semi perimeter. You can see that I took half R common, half R common, half R common. I had to add A plus B plus C and A plus B plus C by 2 is known to be the semi perimeter. So area is equal to radius into semi perimeter which is the proof of this formula. Let us move further now. area in terms of circumradius and the sides of a triangle. Let us suppose the triangle is A, B and C as usual and let the length be A, the length be B and the length be C. If this triangle is completely contained inside a circle, then this circle is called the circum circle. In my lectures on geometry, I have already given a detailed discussion of the circum circle. You can go through those videos. But right now, the center of this circumcircle, this center is called the circumcenter and this circumcenter is equidistant from the vertex A, from the vertex C, and from the vertex B. This radius is called the circumradius. So if in a particular situation we know the three sides A, B and C and also the circumradius then we do not have to apply the longer and complicated Heron's formula. We can simply use another formula which establishes the area of a triangle in terms of the circumradius and the three sides of that triangle. According to this formula, the area is equal to A into B into C divided by 4 times the radius circumradius R. You can remember this formula. It is also another formula for the area of a triangle. I won't be able to prove this formula right now. All you have to do is simply Remember this formula and add it to your notes. 
Another important point regarding the areas of a triangle is when you have two similar triangles then we can write a simple formula for the area of the two similar triangles. Let us suppose the triangle ABC is similar to a triangle DE F and by convention let this side be A, this side be B, this side be C and on the similar pattern this side be D, this side be E and this side be F. I have already done a detailed discussion on the similarity of two triangles and we have already seen that two similar triangles the ratio of the corresponding sides is equal and the corresponding angles are also equal. Without going into all that I will now write the formula the relationship between the areas of the formulas of these two similar triangles but if you remember I have given a detailed proof of this relationship in my videos on similar triangles. I have proved that the ratio of the area of triangle ABC to the ratio to the area of the second triangle DEF this ratio can be written equal to the square of the ratio of the corresponding sides. That is we can write it equal to the area of triangle ABC. So its side will come at the top and the corresponding side F will come at the denominator. It is equal to this. And since C by F is equal also equal to the ratio of the other corresponding sides we can write it as equal to B by E whole square and likewise equal to A by D whole square. This formula is also extremely important from your exams point of view. Questions have always been asked on the basis of this formula. Let us move to our next formula. This formula is on the percent change in area. Let us suppose we have a triangle A, B and C and let its height be H and the base be A. The situation says what will be the percent change in the area of this triangle if the base changes by a certain percent and height changes by certain percent. This is applicable to Arebert's formula only and questions have been there on the basis of this formula in the exams. Let us now write what is the current area. The current area is equal to half of A into H. This is what we have right now. Let us suppose A changes by a changes by x percent to a plus a x by 100 and let us suppose h changes by y percent to H plus HY by 100. 
So if the change in height is by y percent, then the new height will be h plus h y by 100. You will have to remember your concepts of ratios. Now this y can be positive or negative. If it is positive, h will increase. If it is negative, height will decrease. We have written, written a general formula for the change which is applicable to both increase and decrease. Now let us try to obtain a formula for the percentage change. What is the new area? New area is equal to half of half of the new base A plus A x by 100 multiplied by the new height which is h plus h y by 100 which we can write as now you can see I can take out a common and h common so I will write it is equal to half of a h into 1 plus x by 100 multiplied by 1 plus y by 100 which is equal to half now you can see that half of a h is the old area half of a h so I can write which is equal to a into now I can open this it will be 1 plus x by 100 plus y by 100 plus x y by 1000 0, 0, 0. this is 1 so what is the change change will be this area minus a the original area so what will that cause that will cause this one to be cancelled out if you minus a then this a and that a will cancel out so what we will be left with is change is equal to a into x by 100 plus y by 100 plus xy by this. So which implies percent change will be equal to now percent change is change divided by a into 100. So when you divide it by a this a will cancel and when you multiply it by 100 you will get x plus y plus xy by 100. In case you haven't followed this percent change is change by a so when you will divide by a we will be left with x by 100 plus y by 100 plus xy by 10,000 and for percent when we multiply by 100 this 100 cancels, this 100 cancels and 100 cancels so we will be left with x plus y plus xy by 100. You can note down that the formula is same as for the percent change of a rectangle where the length and breadth change by x percent and y percent. So percent change formula for a triangle and for a rectangle is exactly the same. Let me write a few useful inequalities for a triangle. First inequality is that the difference of any two sides is less than the third side. 
This I have already discussed in my videos on triangles. But right now I am listing that the difference of two sides is always less than the third side. This is one thing. The second thing is that sum of two sides is always more than the third side. I am writing it only for A, B and C, but this formula holds true for any two sides. So, A minus C will be less than B and likewise and I have written formula for A, B added, but if you add A and C then that will be more than the third side which would be B. Just as a summary I am writing and the third case is now here I will have three cases that A square plus B square is more than C square for an acute triangle and A square plus B square is equal to C square for a right triangle and A square plus B square is less than C square for an obtuse triangle. So, if sides are given then you can determine whether a triangle is acute triangle by testing for this inequality and for a right you can test whether this is Pythagoras and for obtuse you can test that the square of any two sides is less than the square of the third side. I am sorry this A and B should be the sides that contain the obtuse angle. So, these two sides are special that they have to contain the bigger angle. So, in that case A square plus B square will be less than the third side C square. And for a right triangle, the angle contained between A and B should be 90 degrees so that it becomes a Pythagoras triangle. And similarly for the acute angled triangle, there is an acute angle between A and B and A square plus B square will be more than C square. So, I can write acute right and obtuse. Now, let me write the fourth inequality. It says that the area of any triangle is less than the square of the perimeter divided by 12 square root of 3. So, I am drawing a line here. This is for any triangle. I am writing a heading here any triangle that area is less than p square by 12 square root of 3 and for a special case of equilateral the relation is that area is equal to the square of the perimeter by 12 square root of 3. You can use this as the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle in terms of the perimeter and for a usual any other triangle area will always be less than p square by 12 square root of 3. The fifth inequality it says that area of any triangle is less than a square plus b square plus c square by 4 square root of 3. 
and for the case of equilateral triangle area is equal to the sum of squares of all the three sides in that case a is equal to b equal to c but i am writing them separately so that the equality you can understand is for the same formula that is area is less than a square plus b square plus c square by 4 square root 3 for any triangle and it is equal to in case of an equilateral triangle. And for your general knowledge there is another relation also which says that the sum of squares of the lengths of the medians of a triangle of any triangle that is equal to 3 fourth of the sum of squares of the three sides of that triangle. This is the relation between the lengths of the medians of a triangle and the sides of that triangle. So we have seen six relationships. This is the first relationship, this is the second, this is the third, then this is the fourth, this is the fifth and this is the sixth. You can keep these relationships in your mind and many times questions could be there but as far as I know, question on first, second and third relationships they are usually there in your exams whether they are in geometry portion or whether they are in the mensuration portion.